Father, be with us now and guide us. Harmonize my words with yours in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's Christmas night, part two. God bless you today. I'm glad you're here. Merry Christmas to you. We want to do a follow-up. It's Christmas night, part two. In part one, we spoke of how Jesus is beheld. Christ the Lord is beheld for a few hours. We spoke of those who pass the year without seeing him, suddenly see him. Praise the Lord. We spoke of how people who have been accustomed to using his name in vain now use it in praise. Praise the Lord. We spoke of eyes now free of the blinders of self. Marvel at his majesty. Praise the Lord. If you will, turn to Luke 2, 8 through 14. It's Christmas night, part two. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I want to look back at Luke 2 10 and the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people for there is verse 11 born to you this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. Now, that's what Christmas is about. The Savior, Christ the Lord. See, and we don't need to take away from Christ here, see. We don't need to bring in a Santa Claus or reindeer. We don't need to distract from the Savior. We need no one else on stage but Jesus. Let Jesus have the stage. Let him have the stage alone. Let us who are believers this Christmas and every other Christmas after let us tell the world. Let's not concentrate on trees or presents or reindeer or sleigh. Now, I know it's tradition and I'm not trying to be a Mr. Scrooge here, but don't spend two or three dollars on a Christmas card for me at Christmas. I, I know the message, see, I know the messenger. And that two or three dollars could well feed two or three people on Skid Row. So what do you think Jesus would want? Now I know this might not be what you want to hear and I want you to know that I don't mean 
for this to come across as mean, but someone has got to say it. We have given Christmas too many alternatives. I have got to tell you, I've, I've gotten Christmas cards from friends that have a picture of a dog on it saying ho ho ho. I've got actually a card from another friend of a Santa Claus snorting cocaine on the card. Listen, Jesus is not a dog and he is not a Santa Claus. No, 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 no. This book, this holy Bible says a Savior was born. Christ the Lord, see. And there's another popular thing that's going on around the world, and that's that some have made Christmas a family day. Listen, I guess some think that it's National Family Day or something, so many people are putting their family pictures on their Christmas cards. Well, I just want to tell you, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about your family. And it's not about your birthday. This is not National Family Day. That's in May, I believe. We ought to get down to the subject of Christmas. The Williams family, the Williamsburg family. What's that for? Nobody's celebrating no Williams birthday at Christmas on this day. It's not your birthday. Stop it in Jesus' name. It's not about your grandma, not about your grandpa, not about Santa Claus or chirping birds or snow-capped mountains. That's not what the Bible said. The angels said, don't be afraid, for I bring you great joy, born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now in this scripture, born means something divine has been incarnate in human flesh. And the angel said, he's the savior. And then the angel said, so that we would not be lost. The angel said, he's the savior, which is Christ the Lord, who will forgive our sins. Basically, that's why he came. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swallowing cloths and lying in a manger and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Now you will have to understand this host. This host had suffered for 4,000 years. Listen, this host, this heavenly host, this host was there when God drove Adam out of the garden. This host drooped their wings when Adam gave it up to Satan. See, you must understand this host, this host who had hope for man, but saw man fall under Noah, saw man fall under Adam. This host saw man fall under Abraham. This host saw man under Moses fall. And this host had to be quiet for 4,000 years from the closing of Malachi to the opening of Matthew. But when this host saw what God did, when this host saw God no longer was depending on man at all, he did it all by himself. He did it all by himself. That's what God did. See, You see, the law, man wouldn't keep it. Noah and his sons didn't make it, and God decided to do it all by himself. He wrapped himself up in human flesh. He became incarnate in the flesh. He leaped into the womb of a virgin and submitted himself to human birth. And when this host saw that, they knew that God had done it. This host got loose. Listen. This host said, glory to God, glory to God, glory. And I don't blame this host. My soul today says, glory to God, see. 
God did it all by himself. Listen. So, what is the message of Christmas, my brother? What is the message of Christmas, my sister? The message is that God has made it possible that sons of men may become sons of God. What is the message of Christmas? God has made it possible that our sins can be forgiven through Jesus Christ, through Christ the Lord. God wrapped himself up in the person of his son. He came to earth and dwelled among us. And so Christmas ought to have but one theme, not presents, 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 not trees, 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 not traveling, traveling, tra although it's okay to go visit your family, but the theme of Christmas ought to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And to hear any other message is to miss the message of Christmas. Listen. You may have big plans for Christmas this year, but before we go today, if you haven't, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I promise you if you do, you will be satisfied. I'm here to tell you that God is satisfying. Listen, brother, listen, sister, salvation is satisfying. When your eyes and your spirit upholds the salvation of God, it's satisfying. Listen, we're not talking about some highly intellectual, sophisticated theology. We're talking about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't, all you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died and God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let's do it. Let's do it now. Repeat this after me. Father God, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. I believe in my heart he died and you raised him from the dead. Father God, thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord. I will read your word now, Father. I will understand. Thank you for coming into my heart and saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.